There are various techniques I employed to keep myself safe. That's why MI5 is the best in the world at what we do. Growing up on the streets, I was comfortable being around danger. It was like wearing my watch. Without it, I felt naked, isolated. But with it on my wrist, I felt normal, at home, peaceful. People just don't get how you can be calm and content sinking amongst the world's most dangerous terrorists and mass murderers. But for me, it became my world. Usually we were allowed to break the speed limits, drive through red traffic lights, mount pavements, all the usual stuff you'd expect us to deal with when hunting the world's most dangerous terrorists. We have something in place for extreme cases though, called Steel Badge, in which we're given permission to bump cars out of the way, though never to hurt other road users. If a gap is slightly too narrow for our car, we can use minimal necessary force to squeeze through, which can cause damage to other cars and invariably involves the police chasing us. Such permission isn't given very often, usually only when we know a target is about to blow something up and there's a direct and immediate threat to life. I was very lucky that my wife served with me in the same unit in Northern Ireland. She understood the work I did. There's a huge difference, often fatal, between a normal undercover operator and someone like me. You have to live your cover. Even when paying for a drink in a pub, I'm a down on my luck self-employed painter and decorator trying to pay next week's rent by battering on the horses. And in a crisp 20 pound note to the landlord behind the bar wouldn't fit my profile. If you're asking me whether I prefer pretending to be homeless, soaked in my own piss, or my own life now, no contest. But I do miss my team every day. Capture or Kill is a fiction story of blind eye if it was to exist today. Some of the old boys talk about an operation being given a blind eye during the Cold War days, when MI5 and MI6 ops were still deniable. The term meant the operation was deemed illegal, but necessary. No one would stop you, but if you got caught, you were on your own. I only write what I know. I'm not a literary genius. I can't spend 800 pages describing different metaphors for how the weather is. If it's hot, Write his heart and move on. I was an operator for most of my adult life. It's what I know. I have a lifelong commitment to the OSA, the official secret set. Everything I write, including this interview, has to be vetted and cleared for publication. I will never betray my former colleagues. I hated the phrase, sleeping with one eye open. It's bollocks. Thanks to Hollywood, the general public assume we have some sort of magical powers. I've always been a light sleeper though, probably born out of my childhood always being ready to run at a moment's notice. Nightmares. After being seen by the world's leading experts and getting the assistance from the security service, I was diagnosed with PTSD. I got a call from the unarmed combat instructor from the SIS. Listen, I heard about you taking some person leave from the team. Everything okay, Mucka? I briefly explained I've not been sleeping and I had to see a specialist, Mucka. PTSD is a fucking lottery. I know the strongest men in the world, some absolute monsters. There's nothing you can do. It's like a straight bullet. You can be in a thousand contacts and never get hit, then out of nowhere, you take a round and you hit the deck. No shame in it, it's a fucking minefield. He summed it up perfectly. There are various techniques I employed to keep myself safe. To discuss those will compromise that approach. I can't talk on behalf of other operators of the security service as a whole, but I can say my experience is we approach it the right way. That's why MI5 is the best in the world at what we do. As an operator, you detach your own personal views from everything operational. We're tasked to do a job and we do it, that's it. You know, I'm probably the only person in Britain not to have seen it. I have a few people texting me asking if I'd written it or if it was involved because one of the scenes was similar to one of the chapters out of my first book, Soldier Spy. Look, you're always going to have shows that are exciting, edgy, C type stuff. 
What I've yet to see today is an accurate, real, true-to-life TV show or film about my world. Hopefully we'll see Soldier Spy and Capture or Kill on the screen and make that change. I think the audiences need it rather than the same uninformed shows being circulated and recycled. Capture or Kill shows how important the team is. A wider shot of just one person, but how that one person's actions can affect the entire team. It's an unparalleled look into a world I think about now.